Algebra 2, we're at 9.3a, vertical stretching and shrinking of a graph. If you haven't seen the previous videos, we're up to 6 now. If you become lost or confused, you can click on this description to find out where you got lost. We can draw a graph that is a vertical stretching or shrinking of a given graph. If we multiply the function of x by a constant greater than 1, the graph will stretch away from the horizontal axis. And if we multiply the function of x by a constant from 0 to 1, the graph will shrink towards the horizontal axis. And if we multiply the function of x by a negative constant, the graph is reflected across the horizontal axis. So here we've got this graph, and we've got y equals the function of x, and then we did 2, and then we did a half. So you can see what happens when we multiplied it by 2, see? And when we divided it, or we could say, you know, divided it by 2 or multiplied it by half, it got smaller, didn't it? y equals 2 times the function of x looks like y equals the function of x. The pink one looks like the black one, but it's stretched vertically this way, away from the x-axis. And y equals half times the function of x looks like y equals f of x, except it shrunk vertically. It got squished together towards the x-axis. So for any equation y equals the function of x, if we multiply the function of x by 2, then every function value is doubled and the graph is stretched away from the x-axis. And that's true for any constant greater than 1. And multiplying the function of x by a half will have every function value, which will shrink the graph towards the x-axis. And that's true for any constant between 0 and 1. Now take a look at this one. When we multiply the function of x by a negative number, we reflect the graph across the x-axis and also stretch or shrink it. Multiplying the function of x by a negative 1 will just replace y with a negative y, which reflects it without stretching or shrinking. So here we've got some negative values. Here we've got y equals a function of x, but here it's a negative 2, and here it's a negative half. And you can see what's happening compared to this one. See? This first parabola went up, didn't it? When we did for the pink one. And then when we did it negative, it went down, didn't it? And then it went up. See that? This one, it went up. And then the pink one went down, see? And even this blue one, it went up and then down below x. And here, it goes down and then up above x. See that? So I have a theorem for you. It's basically what I've been saying. In an equation of a relation dividing y by a constant c, it does the following to a graph. If the absolute value c is greater than 1, the graph stretches vertically. If the absolute value c is less than 1, the graph shrinks vertically. And if c is negative, the graph, graph is also reflected across the x-axis. For y equals a function of x multiplied by a constant c, we have y equals the constant times that function of x. And it's equivalent to y divided by c equals the function of x, isn't it? Because we can divide both sides of this equation by c. That'll create a 1 here, and then we'll have y over c. We'll have the quotient of y and c. So an equation for any relation dividing y by 2 will stretch the graph in the y direction. Dividing y by half will shrink the graph in the y direction. So take a look at this. We have y equals the function of x, and here we have it y equals 2 times the function of x. So every function value is doubled because of that 2. If we divide both sides of this equation by that 2, we get a 1 here, and then we have y divided by 2 equals the function of x. See that? And look at this one. We've got y equals g of x. Now we've got y equals negative half times g of x. We can divide both sides of this equation by this negative half and get y divided by a negative half equals g of x. And the whole thing squished towards the horizontal axis, didn't it? It went from being this wide to only being that wide. And the graph is shrunk in the y direction and also reflected across the x-axis. We have each function value and change its sign. 
the amount of stretching and shrinking is proportional to the constant c. If the highest point for y equals f of x is 3 units above the x-axis, that horizontal axis, then the function y equals 2 times the function of x will be 6 units above it because we'll do the 2 times that 3. We're doubling what this one was. If this was 3 units and we're doubling it, it's now 6. And if the lowest point for the function of y equals f of x is 1 unit above the x-axis and the lowest point for y equals 5 times the function of x would be 5 units because that 1 times the 5. See? All right, our next video is 9.3b, and we're going to talk about horizontal stretching and shrinking. I'll add this to the Algebra 2 playlist. I'll still have the link to Chapter 12 from Algebra 1 that talked about relations and functions, and I'll have a link to the previous six videos for this chapter so you can just click on them, okay? So try to keep up with each step, and this will flow very easily, okay? I hope you're having a great day. Don't forget to hit the like button if I've helped you. And don't forget I'm on Patreon.com. And you can become a monthly patron for just a dollar or two. Bye.